with us the House Majority Leader, Dar- Delegate Eric Householder, formerly the uh, Finance Chairman, uh, too. And we welcome you. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you guys? Excellent. Thanks so much for being a part of the program yeah. today, Eric. Yes, anytime. What, what progress are we making with the personal income tax reduction bill, Eric? Well, we're hearing different um, scenarios being percolated over on our Senate, Senate colleagues. Um, now, the House and the Senate, we've met twice together. We're having breakfast uh, where we sit down and, and between the House, the Senate, and the governor's staff, and we're trying to, you know, some path, wage a path forward forward that we can come to some agreement. Uh, some of the conversations that I'm hearing now coming from the Senate side is uh, and the latest article was they want to come out with a new 50 percent proposed income tax plan, something that's more slower, more modern. Now, where have you heard that before? I mean, that's something that I've preached about for the, mm-hmm. for the last four years, uh, which uh, I'm a little I find ironic. I mean, I've, the House has truly set and sent an income tax cut for four years over to our Senate colleagues. And for four years, either we get something back with some revenue enhancements or tax shifting. And uh, I know the Senate president has spoken uh, that he may consider some revenue enhancement, like a 2% sales tax. I think that's a non-starter uh, with the House. I do believe, though, uh, the the governor's numbers are sound. I think it's the safest, most fair way to help work in West Virginians with the the governor's proposal that we have currently. Uh, But I'm open. I'm optimistic. I'd like like for our Senate colleagues, I just like I said, I hear a lot of talk. I like for them to send something back so we can at least see what they're thinking. But right now, we're not there yet. The Senate in the form of Senate President Craig Blair in his last interview on this program said that he did not trust the governor's numbers, the projections of consistent one point, I think it was $8 billion surpluses over the next three years. Eric, why do you trust those numbers? Well, it's not $1.8 billion over the next three years. It's actually $1.2 billion over the next three to four years. And this is all predicated on keeping a flatline budget. But yes, this year, this this uh, budget cycle that we're in, we're projected to have $1.8, $1.9 billion. Um, if we don't do any tax relief, guess what will happen to all that surplus dollars? It'll be spent. It'll be spent on something. And uh, I, this is why I think it's crucial that even the numbers that I've reviewed with the governor's staff, even with a mild recession, we're still on target to have a $1.2 billion um, surplus for the next four years if we keep a flatline budget. It's the same argument that they were using to get Amendment uh, 2 to pass. I don't see why the numbers aren't as sound. You know, it's the same argument. It's the same amount of dollars. It's the same surplus that they were trying to use for Amendment 2. So it's the same money. So I, I just don't understand why all of a sudden um, they don't believe in the numbers. I think it's more to do with uh, right now there's a fight between the governor and the Senate and uh, I think personalities are getting in the way and that's uh, yeah, it's, it's terrible that that's what's happening but uh, they need to move on. Amendment 2 has failed. The voters clearly spoke and what's before us right now is income tax relief, personal income tax cuts and I believe we need to proceed with it. John Gilstrap. Uh, good morning. I, regarding the numbers when I look at the flatline budget, which is actually a five yeah. percent increase, and but we're living in nine percent, eight, seven, eight, nine percent inflationary times, something's got to give, right? So, what is what's not being paid for in in that flatline budget, and how do we in projecting forward into future years, how fragile are the 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 surpluses when clearly we're we're in an inflationary pattern now that doesn't seem to be going anywhere. But remember, John, during inflationary uh, pattern, as you call it, the state government still makes more money. I mean, they generate more sales taxes. Um, You know, we're still funding all the necessary services within our $4.8 billion budget. And uh, that's why I, I don't understand the argument when we when 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 I keep hearing, hey, what what services are we going to cut? Well, we're not cutting any services. We still have a four point eight billion dollar budget. This is all predicated off of surpluses 
the compounding effect of surpluses, and you'll continue to have it for the next four years if you keep a flat budget, if you keep spending under control. That's the key, is to keep the natural growth of spending down. Uh, the natural growth of revenue is about $150 million a month, or excuse me, $150 million a year. If you're using that money, well, in four years, there's $600 million. So you can see the compounding effect. We're still funding all the necessary services that's within our $4.8 billion budget, roads, seniors, everything that uh, higher ed. So, yeah, we're still funding everything within our $4.8 billion budget. Is there a chance? It seems to me we're in, in this, this strange situation where everybody's in violent agreement, right? We, everybody yeah. understands that we need to have, or we want to have, need to have, I would say, these income tax uh, reductions. Is there a chance that this session ends without one? It's very possible. I think you could write a novel on this. Here's your next bestseller. I mean, <laughs> I've said, you know, if if we don't get something across the finish line, it's going to be very hard for Republicans to face uh, their constituents because, you know, the constituents have been pulling the rope for so, so many years. We're in this situation because of our state citizens. I mean, we've we've generated a one billion dollar. Uh, rainy day fund that's an over taxation of our citizens now we're generating by keeping the budget flat that's what our citizens want want us to do they don't want us to create all this new spending and that's generating you know over a billion dollar surplus and uh, what better way to use that and, and and to take the compounding effect of those surpluses and use it for tax relief but by the same token you do have to keep spending under control where it all fails. But that's the key. I mean, that's the key with anything. You have to control the rate of spending if you want to do tax cuts. Matt Harvey. Good morning, Leader Householder. How are you enjoying hey, your Matt. new title? Uh, it's it's pretty good. Uh, we're, uh, we're um, you know, there's been communication issues plaguing the Republican caucus on the House side. So uh, this year we've uh, we're doing things differently, and uh, I've got 12 people around me that we're tackling all communication issues. We, we're having a daily caucus every morning at 8 a.m., and uh, we're giving information. We're, we're meeting with uh, the members. Uh, I'm meeting with all the chairs of every committee, you know, trying to find out what grievances, what problems. So my position is a little bit different uh, from being the finance chair. You know, a lot of people that will be that's coming to see me are having problems or problems with bills on committees. So uh, that's what I'm trying to mitigate all those communication issues, hurt feelings, whatever, grievances, and to try to get a product across the finish line. So everything's going good right now. But like I said, we haven't been too busy yet either. So, well, with with the governor's. Uh proposed tax cut personal yes. income tax cut there is uh, obviously a lot of concern about some of the pre-existing needs that are out there as far as mm -hmm. like 200 million dollars in deferred maintenance in the corrections facilities PEIA uh, a thousand correction uh, uh, employees in the corrections facilities short 1500 school teachers is there enough money to do both Yes, because out of the $1.8 billion surplus, you know, we set aside $700 million for a safety net. That still leaves us $1.1 billion. Um, I'm advocating, hey, look, let's take another $500 million, put it in the safety net. Even the $700 million safety net that we have, that would allow you, if your revenues are off, at least $100 million a year. That gives you a seven year to make some reaction or some change if revenue were to be off. But uh, to answer your question, yes, that still leaves us with a billion dollars to do one-time spending. The money's there. Um, you know, I have no concerns. I mean, it's a sound plan. Uh, um, you know, this tax plan is basically, basically an across-the-board cut for all wage earners. Uh, we've created a safety net. It's the most safest and most fair way to help working West Virginians, and we need to do it. So, has, has there been any studies, and I'm sure there has been, and I'm sure you've reviewed them, on the projected growth and the multiplier effect that that, that, that sort of tax cut would have for the citizens of West Virginia? Well, and right now, that's a good point. This is all based off of static, not dynamic growth. We know that dynamic growth will occur. 
Uh, we see other states, states that are winning that have reduced or eliminated their personal income tax uh, rates. Uh, right now, West Virginia is lagging behind. Uh, if we were to implement this plan, we would have the lowest tax rates from New Hampshire to the Florida line. Uh, at the end of three years, we, Pennsylvania has a 3.07. We would end up at 3.25. But, you know, that makes us more, uh, you know, different than our neighboring states like Virginia. Virginia's talking about reducing their income tax rates from 5.75 down to 5.50. Not much, but states around us are all uh, implementing some type of uh, tax cut, tax reform to spur more economic growth. And, and their states. So we need to get on board or we're going to be falling behind. And we've got to do something different than our com our surrounding neighboring states. And right now, the governor's proposal, I believe, is a sound plan. I've reviewed the numbers with the revenue secretary, and I've looked at their projections, and, and I'm fine with it. Just a note about Pennsylvania, there's also a local tax that's assessed. Yes. And on yes. top of that, Pennsylvania real estate taxes are extraordinarily higher than West Virginia's, so mm -hmm. they can afford and, to have and, a lower state income tax rate. Yeah, and, and to carry on that conversation, uh, the personal property taxes aren't being reduced. That's what pays for our education. Uh, so we're still able to fund all the necessary services that we need to in our $4.8 billion budget. One of the things that you've had uh, that I've talked about before on this program is that we do need to have a serious conversation of what are the priorities of the state. You know, we only have a finite amount of dollars that come in every year, you know, four point something billion dollars. Where do we want to spend those dollars? Is it all towards higher ed? Is it all towards education, DHHR? How do we want to spend those dollars? Uh, is it more for road maintenance or deferred maintenance? But those discussions are really never held. And if we're truly we want to continue down the path by eventually not only eliminating personal income tax, but maybe eliminating all the TPP, the tangible personal property. At some point, we need to have a sit-down conversation and decide what are the priorities of the state. And until that happens, um, you know, we'll still be discussing it till the cows come home. We are talking with Majority Leader Delegate Eric Householder on the program. Uh, Eric, in, in Metro News article today in, regarding mm -hmm. this tax cut, uh, Craig Blair, when asked, said zero in terms of the amount of communication that's been going on between the governor's office and the Senate. And it, and it says, quote, the Senate has not been involved for the last two months, nor invited to be part of the process in drafting this tax plan. Is that accurate? That, well, uh, well, nor have I. I mean, this is a plan that the governor had talked about and came out with. And uh, but by the same token, uh, you know, my ears perk up, perk up any time that they want to do a tax cut. Uh, the governor sent the bill to us. I've reviewed it. Um, we've been we've met now for two weeks with our Senate colleagues just to talk about what is the strategy. Um, so, I mean, they're participating. Now, whether or not uh, they're still angry with the governor with the failure of Amendment 2, I, I, that's, that's the sense that I get. But um, it, it's not like we met with the governor any anytime sooner. But, no, I, maybe a couple weeks before the state of the state, the governor had mentioned to me that he this is what he's proposing. I said, hey, good deal. I like it. Is And you might not be the right person to ask about this, but I know you know both of the players pretty well here in Governor Justice and Senate President Blair. Uh, is this simply a matter of personality and uh, they've had enough of each other and no matter what, they're just not going to come to some type of an agreement? I think so. I know the governor met privately with uh, President Blair. Um, you know, I think that's the key right now is for those two to mend their relationship. I mean... Uh, Senate President Blair for the last six years had a good relationship with the governor. Obviously, the governor went out and campaigned against uh, 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 the Senate team with Amendment 2. That's obviously put a bad taste in their mouth. And uh, But right now, I keep reminding our Senate colleagues, Amendment 2 is it's gone. It's, it's failed. It's time to move on. Put these personalities behind you. 
tomorrow's another day. We just need to move on and do what's right for our citizens. And right now, if if if, if we can get uh, the Senate on board, I think it'll be a great day for our citizens if we can get this tax cut tax cut across the finish line. The original legislation uh, that the government yeah. proposed made it through the House with blistering speed and huge majorities. So that's now sitting yeah. in the Senate. Are there specific yeah. chafing points within that legislation, or is it is it a, a sort of a conceptual difference between the two? And, and by the way, well, Eric, let me just say this. Yeah. Senator Ryan Weld will be our final guest today at 930, yeah. so we'll obviously get yeah. some Senate answers there. But go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm hearing that they want to do triggers for year two and year three. I'm hearing that they may want to take it out to five or six years. All I can, and, and I'm fine with all of that. I, I, that's what I've done for the last four years. I've tried every way under the sun, and they've scoffed at it and said, hey, look, it doesn't create the big splash. I know Senate President Blair. I've heard him on this radio station say several times that they want to do a 50 percent reduction. They wanted a big splash. I think the governor has finally said, OK, I heard you. And the governor has proceeded with that. But now it's OK. Now we've got to take a look at the numbers. We need to slow this down. And uh, we may we may need to slow it down longer than three years. Whatever it takes, uh, come on, let's get on board. Let's let's provide tax relief. Our citizens want it. A 30 percent uh, tax cut at year one is 795 uh, million dollars. We're like I said, we're projected to bring in 1.9 billion. Uh, if they want to take year two and three and run it out and maybe do five percent over the next four or five years, hey, I'm fine with that. But at least send something over. Uh, but right now, the only thing that I've heard out of the Senate president at our last uh, breakfast was, I don't know if we trust the numbers, we may need to add 2% sales tax. Well, that's a non-starter uh, over on the uh, House side. And and he knows that. He's aware of that. So uh, I hope that they uh, think about it and uh, at least send something over that's workable where we can get something across the finish line. But surely all parties are aware that it's going to be a very, very embarrassing moment if if this session closes without some kind of income tax cut. Absolutely. I, I've been saying that for the last four years. It's been pretty embarrassing. So here we are. Here we are again talking about it. Um, it's time to stop talking and start doing. Matt Harvey. Uh, yes, Leader Householder, uh, sw- switch gears off taxes for a minute. Um, yeah. The the Senate Judiciary has passed a campus carry, and I believe it's been yeah. referred to their finance. Um, you know, assuming that it, it goes through finance and passes the Senate and comes to the House, um, what are its chances in the House? And it, do you anticipate any sort of amendments? No, uh, actually, uh, two years ago, maybe even two and a half years ago, I led the charge to get campus carry, and we passed it in the House. I forget the uh, actual passage, but it was it was well over 80 votes, and it was our Senate colleagues who had problems who couldn't get it across the finish line. So we asked this year, start it in the Senate, send it over to the House. We won't have any problem passing it. So, And any... I know the governor's called for it. I know certainly you've called for it. Uh, any movement on locality pay? Actually, the bill has been introduced. Uh, so you're going to see a locality pay locality pay bill. I've talked about it. It's a five-member commission. It takes the legislature out of the process. The only process that the legislature has to do is appropriate money to this uh, five-member commission. And from these nine, ten factors, uh, they must assess which county could use locality pay. Whether this bill gets across the finish line, I don't know. But it's a start. It, it's trying to prevent the Christmas tree effect that we saw last year when we tried to bring a bill down on the House floor uh, to help out um, the three counties in the eastern panhandle. It was a $300,000 cost. It ended up being $30 million uh, because we ended up giving a $10,000 raise to every state trooper across the state. So I thought, okay, how can we take that Christmas tree effect out? And the only the only idea I could come up with is to have an independent five-member commission specifically list nine or ten factors that they must use in determining what areas need locality pay. And then it's up to the legislature to appropriate money. We could appropriate anywhere from 
a dollar up to 10 million, 20 million, but it would be based off of how much money you would appropriate. Um, because if you only appropriated $2 million, obviously only certain little, uh, one little area or one county, you, you may only see raises in one field. So, uh, we'll see how that bill, um, you know, how it manifests throughout the, 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 uh, process. But like I said, we'll see if it even crosses the finish line. This is going to be an interesting can of worms to open because up here, I'm sure people would say, well, we pay more for housing and we pay more for yeah. gasoline here. Yeah. And, and maybe in another part of the state, they might say, well, you know what? The price of eggs has gone up more in our part of the state than it has in your part of the state. This right. th this is going to be an interesting meeting here. How do you determine yeah, it this? Will be. It yeah. will be. It will be. I think it will start in uh, House Finance and uh, – and then we'll see what the discussions are like. And then, of course, it's got to go through the same process on the Senate side. So, And in regards to PEIA, has any progress been made as to how that problem will be fixed long term yet? Yes, uh, there's a group of uh, legislators that would like to maybe pursue a privatization route. There's talks that, and of course, to privatize P PEIA would probably be a three-, four-year process. Uh, just the, the you know, conversations have started. It's something that's costing the West Virginia taxpayers uh, about $900 million a year, almost a billion dollars. Uh, there's conversations about spousal support, conversations about premium increases. But right now there hasn't been a per se uh, bill that's been introduced. But conversations are happening. Has the governor's 5% for all state employees on average pay raise bill been introduced yet? Uh, not to my knowledge, but uh, I've also convinced the governor that uh, if we're going to do a 30 or 50 percent tax cut, um, it's probably best not to run that pay raise bill. And uh, I think our Senate colleagues would agree as well. But those are decisions that, that haven't been made. Uh, instead of receiving a 5 percent across the board pay raise, you would be better off to have a 30 percent personal income tax cut. Uh, time you factor in the 35 uh, percent of, of taxation that's taken out of your 5 percent raise, you're probably better off to have a 30 percent personal income tax. That would be retroactive to January 1st of this year. So has the math been uh, done on that yet to actually prove that to be true? Uh, no, I haven't sat down and actually proved, you know, but... Um, I think in the end, though, that, you know, it'd be either probably a dead wash or a little bit to your favor to have a 30 percent personal income tax cut. And is there anything, by the way, Mr. Hornby, who got some impressive yeah. signatures on his small business bill, uh, Eric, and I think yours was on there, too. Uh, it was, yeah. sent, sent me a text that that's coming up for reading today. Uh, what do you know about this HB 3007? He's all proud about it. Uh, there was he a couple. He, he brought it to me. I found a couple mistakes, and and uh, he said, "Oh, good. That's why I needed a second set of eyes." And I said, "Good, good, good." So he he you know, he, got, he got those mistakes fixed, and uh, I just saw him walking around yesterday uh, getting uh, signatures on it. So are you saying that it's already uh, ready to be on a committee? I think it said Is that what you're saying. He said, "My bill will be introduced today, HB three thousand seven. Uh, okay, in introduced. So it has, and it'll be introduced. But uh, I thought you were, were were referring to that it might be on a committee agenda. Oh. But yeah, yeah, he just finished getting signatures on it. So it's a novel concept. We'll see what the committee process does with it. If it even makes it on a committee's agenda, that's the neat thing about. Uh, there's over 2,000 bills that get introduced, and you're lucky if 200 even become an actual bill. So I've tried to. Uh, alert a lot of these new members don't get your feelings hurt there's been there's been a lot of good concepts or good ideas that you think are good ideas or good concepts that never reach it reach it across the finish line that's life and uh try again try harder next year uh, eric thank you very much appreciate your time today as always yep. sir. 